Quinnipiac Volleyball faced off against St. Peter's as the Bobcats look to extend their winning streak to nine against the Peacocks. Could they get it done? The men's soccer team battled against Harvard on Saturday afternoon as Quinnipiac looked to stay perfect through five games. Could the Crimson hand the Bobcats its first loss? The answers to those questions and so much more are coming up right now on Sports Pause. Hello and welcome to Sports Pause. I'm Joe Lagrippo alongside Ross Meglin. Quinnipiac sports are really starting to get into the swing of things and we have a ton to cover today. This is Ross's first time on Sports Pause, so I think it's only fair you start I, us off. I gotta get the rookie treatment, right? I think we're gonna make you pack up the lights after this wow, too. Wow, that's yeah. tough, that's <laughs> tough. All right, well Quinnipiac Volleyball opened conference play with a pair of MAC contests at Burt Con Arena. Saturday's match against St. Peter's, let's recap the action. Coach Robinson focused on getting the first conference win of the season as fans back in attendance for the first time in two years. We'll start in the first set. Off the Peacock serve, Kim Zilmo makes an easy dig for Chloe Kahanui to set up Lexi Morris. Boom, powerful kill. This was the turning point of the match. Quinnipiac wins first set 25-12. Second set. Fuvai Kim Zilmo sets up Maggie Baker. Powerful kill again. Couldn't rebound. Peacocks couldn't rebound. Quinnipiac wins second set, 25-13. Third set. St. Peter's tries to make a comeback. Alisa Mejia shuts the door with that kill. Bobcats win the third set, 25-15 for a three-set sweep. After the game, Q30 Volleyball beat reporter Eric Kerr had the chance to talk to head coach Kyle Robinson after his team's sweep in the first conference opener. Quinnipiac Volleyball finally ended their eight-game losing streak, taking their first win of MAC play here today at the Bird Concord in dominating fashion against the St. Peter's Peacocks. Now, Kyle Robinson said their battle at the net was won today. He also mentioned that their positioning on both the offensive and the defensive attack is what helped them come out on top. With our blocking, we're always looking at our vision, um, really our footwork and our vision. Then you, you know, break it down to hand placement. It really just is a connection to vision. We had those early tournaments, and we've been working to be better from those tournaments. Um, and blocking has been part of it. Stepping on the gas and staying on it, right? Coming out really hot and not letting down, and just playing really good, clean volleyball consistently the whole time. We have the physicality, we have the tools. Now it's just, it's going to come from each of us here. And the Bobcats will have their second MAC game in just a quick amount of time. It will be tomorrow afternoon, same time, same place, against the Ryder Bronx. Reporting for the Burt Con Court, Eric Kerr, Q30 Sports. The Bobcats were back on the court Sunday afternoon, this time taking on reigning MAC champs, the Ryder Bronx. Let's see how they fared against them. Quinnipiac taking on Ryder after coming off a 3 0 sweep of St. Peter's. The last matchup between these two teams was in 2019 in the MAC quarterfinals. Quinnipiac came out on top. So the Ryder Bronx looking for a little bit of revenge. Let's head to the first set. Chloe Kawanui. We're going to hear her name a lot here. She makes a nice dig towards Fuve Kim So Mo, who sets up Olga Zampati for the kill. Nice play there. Ryder take the first set, 29-27 to lead 1-0. Chloe Kawanui again, this time on the serve. And the ball trickles over the net for an ace. What a play there by the Bobcats. Quinnipiac takes the second set, 25-18, to tie it up at one. Kawanui again in the fourth set. She sets up an easy kill for Ariana Diaz. Diaz led the team on Sunday with 16 kills. Ryder takes the fourth set and will win 3-1. Let's take a look at the max standings for volleyball. Fairfield, Niagara, and Canisius, they all round out the top three. The Bobcats sit in sixth out of 10 teams right now. Competition for Quinnipiac will only get a little tougher this weekend as they make the trip to Buffalo to take on Niagara and Canisius. Joining us now is Q30 Volleyball beat reporter Eric Kerr. Eric, thanks for being here tonight. So Eric, who is your team MVP so far this season? Well, thanks for having me here, Ross. And to start it out, my team MVP thus far is none other than Nicole Leg. I could have gone for a more an offensive a player here, but I decided to go with someone who could impact the game in all areas, and that is Nicole Legg. You see it on your screen there. Leads the team in blocks to 23, 56 kills, good for fourth on the team, and five service aces. So 
you know, and she's done all this in more time played. Last year, she only played in just three matches, had 10 kills and five digs on the day. So that is some big time stuff right there. Be able to show that she can execute in more playing time out there on the court. So definitely look for Nicole Leg as a potential Mac Most Improved Player of the Year candidate. Eric, obviously it's a bit early, but coming into their matchup, Quinnipiac was ahead of Ryder in the Mac standings, and the Bronx had their way with the Bobcats this past weekend. So is that more of a testament to the talent that Ryder has, or was that Quinnipiac just off their game a little bit? Yeah, Joe, I think it was... Yeah, Joe, I think it was more Ryder just being the more talented team coming in. The first match that the Bronx played before they played against the Bobcats was against the Fairfield Stags. And against that team, it was all tight three sets. They ended up losing all three of them, but they only lost the highest evidence it was by five points. So you knew this game was going to be much tougher than a St. Peter's team that Quinnipiac rolled over in the first game. So obviously, honestly though, Quinnipiac definitely played as best as they could. They had some tight set matches. You would have liked to see them play a little bit better, start out a little bit stronger, including a set four where they were down by as many as 12, only ended up losing that set 25 to 21 as they went on a nine to one run to get themselves back into it. But at the end of the day, Joe, they got to make sure they can start out the set stronger and not wait to start. Get the game plan going earlier in each set to be able to have a better chance to come out on top. All right, Eric, last question. So what do the Bobcats need to do to compete with a team like Niagara, who is second in the max standings, and a team who Quinnipiac hasn't defeated since the 2018 season? Well, Ross, I say this all the time, and it's going to come down to the block battle, and the same can be said for Niagara. I mentioned the Coleg's blocking number. She's leading the team. Over 20 blocks is the only player on this Quinnipiac roster to have that number. Thus far, the Purple Eagles already have three players over total blocks. Larissa in Bazero, 27 blocks. Taylor Allen, 24 blocks. And Mary Reddy with 22 blocks. So big key here. It's a tough first road matchup for this Quinnipiac team, but if they can be able to dominate the block battle and get some advantage there, it's going to be a huge win set up to be coming up for the rest of their seven-game road trip coming ahead. All right, great stuff as usual, Eric. Thank you. Now we'll shift from the court to the pitch, checking in with men's soccer. Following a 5-0 start to begin the 21 season, men's soccer continues to receive national recognition for its success. The Bobcats have received votes in the latest United Soccer Coaches Top 25 poll, which, is re which recognizes the top Division I programs in the nation. The program received two total votes in the poll, finishing just outside the top 25 nationally for the second consecutive week. Finishing as an honorable mention in the coaches poll, Quinnipiac continued to prove they deserve that respect, notching another win to stay perfect through five games, this time against Harvard. Let's roll the highlight. Quinnipiac and Harvard, like I said, Bobcats looking to continue their perfect season to start out 5-0. We'll jump into the action straight into the first half in the 30th minute. Harvard with a free kick, that, but that's going to land safely into the hands of Quinnipiac. Just a few minutes later, Jared Smith's free kick is saved. Bobcats starting to attack more and into the second half now. David Bursito lays it off to Brog Austin, who rifles it into the top right corner. It's Austin's third goal in three games. Bobcats take the early lead in the half. Check out this, Selly. There you go. Have fun <laughs> with it. Quinnipiac on the break again. Hillinger gets, into, gets the ball into the box, lays it off to Versito, whose shot is pushed away. Bobcats still remain on top. Late in the second half, the momentum switches into Harbor's favor as they attack the Bobcats' goal. But the Quinnipiac defense continues to be resilient. The Bobcats top Harvard with the final score of 1-0. Bobcats remain perfect on the year. Following that 1-0 victory, men's soccer beat reporters Roberto Casillas and Ben Kane gave their postgame thoughts on the win. All right, we're here in the Quinnipiac Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium here with Ben Kane. We just saw the Quinnipiac men's soccer team extend the win streak to five. They beat, Ryan, they beat Harvard, excuse me, one nothing here. Ben, what is it that you like so much for, from, from the team today? Yes, you know, I don't want to say DeCasso stole the words right out of my mouth, but in his press conference after the match, he talked about having those five minutes of just where the Quinnipiac are unplayable. They're bombing forward. They're not really getting any trouble from Harvard. And that's what I want to see more out of the Bobcats. Sustained, consistent throughout yeah. the whole game. Yeah. Uh, Brock Austin, 
man of the match, scorer of the only goal of the game, three straight games with a goal for the Norwegian. Uh, ben, he, he's been a fantastic player. We all knew the hype coming into the season, and he's living up to it. What, what, what has he been doing so well to start the season? You no, know, I think he started off the season a little bit slow when I came and watched the first few games. It seems like he was letting the play kind of come to him rather than taking it on. In these last few games, he's been taking on the play. You saw just that goal, just gets it outside the box, rifles on the top corner. Another free kick as well, but it just seems like he's not letting the defenders come to him. He's taking them on. He's making them defend him, and that's where he gets around, and that's where he's so good. He's playing with a lot of confidence. And the team is going to lead a lot of confidence because on Tuesday they're, they're traveling to play the University of New Hampshire, a ranked team, probably going to be their toughest game so far. So what do they have to do to keep the winning streak going and go win on the road on a tough game? You know, like I said before, it's about consistency. Those five minutes, they got to be the whole game. You got to keep pressing and pressing and pressing until the team can't defend you anymore and you're just running through on an open goal. But the second thing that I think was a good takeaway from this game is Dacasa's deep, deep team. We saw, I think he played 22 players today, and he was able to arrest the likes of uh, Henry Vigan, and we also saw Simon Hildreth was coming the off the bench also as well. Yeah. Uh, just showing the depth of this team and how good they can be down the road when they can pull people off the bench, and it, they slot right in and fit right into the system. Yeah, the men's soccer team will travel to play Tuesday against the University of New Hampshire, and then they will come back later in the week to play Saturday against Northeastern. From Ben Kane, Roberto Casillas, reporting for Q30 Sports. Quinnipiac men's soccer goalkeeper Andreas Hajigavriel has been named MAC Defensive Player of the Week. He made six saves in the 1 0 win over Harvard on Saturday. The weekly honor is the second consecutive award for the sophomore keeper, as he also earned MAC Defensive Player of the Week honors last week on September 13th. He now owns a 4 0 record during the fall 2021 campaign. The Quinnipiac women's soccer team lost its first game of the season 1-0 at Columbia on Sunday. The Lions scored one goal in the first half to seal the victory in New York. Columbia's Nada Ramirez netted the game's only goal in the 25th minute. The Lions outshot the Bobcats 13-9 overall, but Quinnipiac tallied five shots on net as compared to Columbia's four. Columbia committed 14 fouls and Quinnipiac had 11. Megan Phillips made three saves in the net for Quinnipiac, allowing the one goal. Bobcats will open MAC play on the road at Monmouth on September 25th at 6 p.m. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll catch you up on how the field hockey team fared this past weekend in an exciting battle with Temple and then against Hofstra. We'll also have the team's beat reporter live in studio to talk about their season thus far. We'll see you right after the break. do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love.
Welcome back to Sports Pause. I'm Joe Lagrippo alongside Ross Meglin. The Quinnipiac field hockey team squared off against Temple on, at home on Friday. It was their first matchup since 2019, the Bobcats being 3-0 since 2017 against them. Will they continue the streak? Let's find out. First quarter with 30 seconds remaining. The Owls score on a penalty shot to put Temple up 1-0. Quinnipiac later in the first quarter gets a penalty corner with one second left in the first Tie game 1-1. In the second quarter, the Owls get a few bounces to go their way, and they go up 2-1. Bobcats not done yet. Amelia Mazzarelli going past a few defenders, and she's going to score her second goal of the half. We're now tied at two in Hamden. Little nifty goal there. On to the second half. This half was highlighted by junior goalkeeper Mac Varell, who started her first game of the season. Varell had 11 saves in the game. The Bobcats will head into overtime for the first time since November 2019. It was all defense, just like in the regular season, but the penalty shootout, Quinnipiac and Temple. Temple with a nice move here in the shootout, and they put it home. They go up 2-1. Third penalty shot for Temple and they're gonna bury it, and that's the game. Temple wins the shootout, 3-2. After an off day Saturday, the Quinnipiac field hockey team faced off against Hofstra in New York. Hofstra would go on to win 2-0 over the Bobcats with two second quarter goals. Both teams with five shots on goal, goalkeeper Mac Burrell made three saves. She now has 14 stops over the first two games she's played in during the 2021 campaign. Quinnipiac also earned 11 penalty corners, which is a season best mark. Joining us in studio is volleyball beat reporter Ryan Coop. Ryan, thanks for joining us. What does Quinnipiac need to fix to get their first win? Thanks for having me, guys. I know Quinnipiac's record says they're 0-5, but their play has been a little better than that. Uh, we saw that especially this past weekend. After their loss to Temple, head coach Becca Main said that First year, Amelia Mazzarelli needs to get more involved in the offense. Uh, the first year is very talented. She has some of the best stick skills on the team. They need to get her the ball more, figure out how she works in Quinnipiac's offense, and get her more goals. On defense, Quinnipiac's been good. That's where most of the veteran presence come. Uh, senior captain Jess Halley, senior Amanda Panaro, and senior Michaela Duggan have done a good job causing turnovers in the defensive zone and making taking a lot of pressure off whoever's in net, whether it's Nina Santori or Mac Burrell. One thing I think the Bobcats need to work on as the season continues is they need to get better with corners. So far, Quinnipiac only has 25 corners this season, while opponents have 44. Most of their goals this year have come off corners, and most of the goals they've let up have been off uh, defensive corners. So I think Quinnipiac needs to figure out how to create more penalty opportunities in the offensive zone and stop taking so many penalties in the defensive zone. If they do this, I think they could turn the season around. All right, so it's been a slow start offensively with just three goals scored in regulation. Who do you anticipate having a breakout season the rest of the way? So like I said, after the loss to Temple on Friday, head coach Becca Main said they got to figure out how to get Amelia Mazzarelli more involved in the offense. She has some of the best stick skills on the team. She is fast. Uh, she's, I would say, in my opinion, the best player on Quinnipiac's roster. But she's a first-year player, so the chemistry is not there. She's not used to playing with these girls. Uh, I think as the season continues, they'll figure it out, they'll get her more opportunities, and she's going to get a lot more goals. I also think that we need to take a look at uh, junior Stellar Tickmeyer. You know, she has that same ability to push the ball into the offensive zone um, that we see Mazzarelli have. She's six feet tall, so she uses that height and that size to an advantage to fight through uh, the defense, create opportunities, but she doesn't have any goals this year, so I'd like to see her get more shots, and I think uh, if we get those two more involved, Quinnipiac gets those two more involved. Uh, they're going to get more wins. All right, this weekend the Bobcats traveled to Virginia to face Old Dominion on Friday, then up to New York to play Wagner on Sunday. What should we expect in upcoming matchups? So a lot like this weekend, I think we could expect to see better field hockey. You know, Quinnipiac lost in a shootout to Temple, who is 4-1. Uh, it wasn't a bad game. It was the best game, personally, I believe uh, the Bobcats have had this year. And then they went over to Hofstra. They lost 2-0, but they outshot Hofstra 11-10. I think, like I said, they need to get Amelia Mazzarelli more involved in the offense. The defense needs to keep doing what they're doing. They're going facing a team in Old Dominion who's 4-2. Uh, Old Dominion has a big win against nationally ranked 
James Madison University. That team's going to be a little tougher to beat, uh, but after that, they get to take on Wagner, who's only 1-4. I think this could be where we see Quinnipiac get their first win of the season. Uh, like I said, they get the offense going, they keep the defense playing strong, and I think this season turns around for the Bobcats. Thanks so much for joining us, Ryan. Now shifting gears, the Quinnipiac men's cross-country team, they took seventh place overall at Iona on Friday. Junior Matthew Renee led the team with a 47th place finish in the 8K race. Temple finished first as a team at Iona with 23 points. The Bobcats will have a week off before competing at Lehigh on October 1st. The Quinnipiac women's cross country team took second place overall at Iona on Friday. Senior, senior Emily Young led the team with a fourth place finish in the 5K race. Young led the Bobcats with two top five finishes, the team's first two meets this season. Johns Hopkins took home first place overall with 45 points, and Quinnipiac will be back in action on October 1st at Lehigh. All right, Quinnipiac women's tennis kicked off the 2021-22 season on Friday afternoon, competing in the first day of the Quinnipiac Hidden Duels versus West Army West Point. Uh, they had eight wins uh, combined in that match, and then on again on Saturday they played day two. Uh, versus Fairfield. They had another eight wins in that match. So on Friday and Saturday, eight combined wins, or eight, 16 combined wins, eight each day. So Quinnipiac women's tennis competed the second day of the all right, so coming up next, Sports Pause will highlight the start to the women's ice hockey season after their exhibition game this weekend. Plus, the SNY Connecticut Ice Festival is back this January. Stay with us. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? What? My. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to Sports Pause. I'm Ross Meglin with Joe Lagrippa. We'll keep things rolling. Joe, take it away. Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team played their first exhibition game of the season on Saturday against UConn. The Bobcats fell behind 1-0 in the first period, but they would eventually rally back to score three unanswered goals to defeat the Huskies 3-1. Quinnipiac goals were scored by Kendall Cooper, Olivia Koningson, and Maya Labad. They will play Maine at home this upcoming weekend in a non-conference matchup. The Connecticut Ice Tournament is back. Quinnipiac, Sacred Heart, UConn, and Yale men's ice hockey will all square off in the second annual tournament on SNY. The four schools will square off in a two-round, four-game tournament. 
UConn and Yale will open the tournament at 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, January 29th, followed by Quinnipiac versus defending champion Sacred Heart at 7 p.m. As conference play picks up across Quinnipiac Fall Sports, let's take a look at the week ahead. Men's soccer looks to remain undefeated on Tuesday against number nine ranked New Hampshire. Field hockey, looking for their first win, will travel to face Old Dominion on Friday afternoon. Women's volleyball will take on Niagara, who has bested the Bobcats as of late. And finally, women's soccer is away on Saturday, taking on the Monmouth Hawks. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment. We got the top five. Ross, kick us off. Let's go. All right, starting off with play number five. First year libero, Fuvai Kinzil Mo, perfectly sets up Maggie Baker. We'll see it here. Perfectly sets her up for the kill. Let's watch this again in slow motion. Baker gives St. Peter's libero no chance to return this one. On to play number four now. Volleyball again, this time against Ryder. Chloe Kawanui makes a nice defensive play, then sets up Mo. Then it's Olga Zampati to put the point on the board for the Bobcats. On to play number three. We get some action from the field hockey. Forward, forward Stella Tickmeyer finds Jess Haley in the center. Haley rips a shot through the defender's legs and scores, tying the game at one apiece. Number two, back to he field hockey. First year, Amelia Mazzarelli breaks away from the tem Temple defense and jukes out both the goalie and the defender. She flicks the ball into the net to finish off a marvelous play. All right, now it's time for play number one. Defenseman Jared Smith runs up the pitch and passes the ball to David Bersado, who would then dish the ball to Bragan Asin. Sends a missile into the back of the net with his left foot. The lone goal ultimately won the game for the Bobcats. Better goal or better sell it, you tell me. <laughs> All right, that's all the time we have for tonight. Make sure you keep up to date on Quinnipiac Sports by following us on Twitter at Q30 Sports, visiting our website, q30tv.com, and download the Q30 television app. For Joe Lagrippo, I'm Ross Meglin. Have a great night.